Consummate Victory The Commonwealth Bank of Australia The Commonwealth Bank of Australia was inspired by King O'Malley, an American who found out the secrets of fractional reserve banking while working for his uncle's bank in New York in the 1880s. When the bank's first governor, Sir Denison Miller, was asked where he proposed obtaining capital for his bank, he replied, What capital? I don't need any capital. My capital is the entire wealth and credit of the whole of Australia. With an advance of £10,000 from government, which was quickly repaid, the Commonwealth Bank of Australia was founded on the 15th of July, 1912. Although established as a private bank, it operated as a state bank, with the power to carry on all business generally transacted by banks, including that of a savings bank. Furthermore, the bank was entitled to raise capital through the sale of debentures secured by the national credit. Its profits were equally divided into two funds, a reserve fund to meet any liabilities incurred by the bank, and a redemption fund to redeem debentures or other stock issued by the bank. Thereafter, 50% of its profits were allocated for the liquidation of the national debt. For the next 12 years, notwithstanding the years of World War I, 1914 to 1918, Australia enjoyed one of its greatest eras of prosperity. By providing government loans at a nominal rate of interest, viz. two-thirds of 1% per annum, it enabled the country to embark on a huge infrastructure program. It included provision of 18.72 million Australian dollars for the construction of dams and the Murrumbidgee Irrigation System, the Great Transcontinental Railroad, electricity power plants, gas works, harbors, roads, and tramways. In addition, the fruit, wheat, and wool crops of farmers were financed for an amount of 3 million Australian dollars at nominal rates of interest. It made available 4 million Australian dollars to purchase 15 cargo steamers in order to transport Australia's growing exports and 8 million Australian dollars were allocated to subsidized housing. World War I cost Australia 700 million Australian dollars, but it was financed by the bank as a non-interest bearing debt. This phenomenal period of prosperity was terminated in 1924 when a bill which placed control of the bank in the hands of a directorate consisting of a governor, the secretary to the treasury, and six persons actively engaged in agriculture, finance, and industry for different terms of years was introduced by Stanley Melbourne Bruce, Prime Minister 1924 to 1929, and Dr. Earl Page, his coalition partner. There is a suspicion that Bruce may have been bribed, as what he did was completely against the best interests of the Australian people. During his term of office, the Australian government borrowed £230 million from the City of London, and by 1927, the federal and state debt had reached £1 billion and the budget was in deficit. On the 10th of October, 1924, the bill was proclaimed as an act. The subsequent effect of this act was to place the bank under the control of a body of men who later deprived it of the right to create the nation's money supply free of debt and interest. In 1927, the bank lost its savings bank subsidiary. And although it was permitted to continue issuing banknotes and thereby earn a modicum of seniorage, it thereafter became a central bank operating exclusively for the benefit of private banks. The final betrayal of the bank occurred on the 20th of March, 1947, when the House of Representatives voted by 55 to 5 votes for it to become a member of the International Monetary Fund and thus subject to the decrees and dictates of the Rothschild-controlled Bank for International Settlement.